sins for making the audience wait this long. Who the f do you think you are, Valve? Lala. Hawkeye's entire goddamn family gets snapped away. His wife and three children. In Ant-Man 2, more Ant-Ning, we saw Scott lose everyone around him when he went into the quantum realm. We saw both Fury and Maria Hill disappear, and meanwhile, Craig and his family are completely okay. You hear that, Craig? F you and your stupid family, Craig. Yes, you all waited seven months and two days for this. Congratulations. 34 seconds like the Marvel logos. Holy f Thank God it finally showed up. I thought I was going to pass out. I feel like Ethan Hunt getting a hit of oxygen after that free dive in Rogue Nation. A pop culture reference and logo sin combined into one? Damn, bringing out all the stops for this video, aren't we? So the fuel cells were cracked during battle and we figured out a way to reverse the ion charge and bought ourselves in about 48 hours of flight time. Why the f*** did they take off in this ship without inspecting every last detail? I know the urge to go home is strong, but they could have stayed on Titan for a while to potentially find supplies, fix whatever needed to be fixed, and find fuel from at least two ships that crash-landed during that fight, Nebula's Necrocraft and the Q-ship. I feel like this whole thing was made up just to get Captain Marvel involved. Wait, what? Did you take a stupid pill when watching the ending of Infinity War? You must have, because you're suggesting that Tony was in any mental state to check a ship he knows nothing about for fuel, right after being stabbed by Thanos and having people disappear in front of him after losing the Time Stone. Wait, each of these sinks in this bathroom have individual shaving mirrors? Is that really necessary? It's about as necessary as pointing this out. Gwyneth Paltrow doesn't know what movie she's in in this scene. Picking on Gwyneth Paltrow for no discernible reason ex machina cliche. He did exactly what he said he was going to do. Thanos wiped out 50% of all living creatures. Even though the world governments are in pieces, they were able to take not only an impromptu census, but also a cat and dog census. This scene isn't stating that they took a census, only that Thanos said something and that something happened. They have no reason to doubt anything Thanos stated, so if he stated he intended to kill half the population, that's probably what he did. Honestly, into this exact second, I thought you were Build a Bear. Har har tones. This falls just as flat as what he called Ebony Maw Squidward in Infinity War. Rando pop culture references don't always equate to comedy movie. Um, Amazing, coming from the guy that literally only uses pop culture references to keep up the facade that this series isn't meant as actual criticism. And saying the Squidward joke fell flat? Hmm, let's see what actual audiences thought of that scene. You need to get lost, Squidward. <laughs> <laughs> I like it. Right? Another! You need to get lost, Squidward. <laughs> We're the Avengers, not the Pre-Avengers. Okay. Right? You made your point. Tony, Tony just sit, great, sit down. Friend. Pick a lane, movie. Either Tony is so upset that he can't think straight, or he's just lighthearted enough to make whimsical comments about Captain Marvel and call Rocket a Build-A-Bear. It can't be both. Aren't you the same guy that said Tony should have checked the Benatar for fuel after Thanos killed the Iron Spider? You're contradicting yourself here. And where the hell have you been all this time? There are a lot of other planets in the universe. And unfortunately, they didn't have you guys. How did the story of Thanos looking for the Infinity Stones elude you in your travels? Are you serious? The Avengers didn't know about Thanos looking for the Infinity Stones until Infinity War, and they fought his army 11 years ago. Thanos didn't make his intentions known until he attacked Xandar, and by this time, Captain Marvel was busy farting around with the scrolls light years away. This is gonna work, Steve. I know it will, because I don't know what I'm gonna do if it doesn't. Go back to the Fantastic Four? Up your ass. He used the stones to destroy the stones. Weird. I used my farts to cover for other farts, but there were still farts left over, so what gifts? This is what happens when you push CinemaSins into a corner and they try to prove that they are a comedy channel and not a criticism channel. You get jokes like these. This is why we say that they are mainly a movie criticism channel, because when they actually try to be funny, well... Once again, tele-holograms will have a normal conversation with each other like they're literally standing in a room like this, when in fact they're all by themselves, in some sort of hollow booth that I would just once like to see in operation. If they're wearing VR, we'd see it on their holograms. If they have a panoramic video screen around them that is tied to a certain channel, then where is camera? Come on, is this really something wrong with Avengers Endgame? Who the hell is sitting around going, Gee, I wonder how these holograms work. I mean, there's a talking space raccoon on the screen who not only speaks English, but does so with a Brooklyn accent. Who gives a shit about how these holograms work, and why would the movie be better for explaining it? 
I'm sorry, that must have been a very long five years. Yeah, but that's just it. For me, it was five hours. The quantum realm makes years seem like hours. Why did Michelle Pfeiffer look 30 years older when she got rescued from it? Ant-Man said that time works differently in the quantum realm, not that the quantum realm makes years seem like hours. At the end of Ant-Man 2, Janet specifically warned Scott to avoid time vortexes, meaning she knew to avoid them while she was there. And don't get sucked into a time vortex. We won't be able to save you. What if there was a, a way that we could enter the quantum realm at a certain point in time, but then exit the quantum realm at another point in time. So you spent five hours in the quantum realm, and because of relativity, that was five years on Earth. The problem is, in both the quantum realm and in the outside world, time was moving forward. So why do you think there are points that you can go to just because of your five-hour experience with relativity? As I just explained, the point is that time works differently in the quantum realm. No one said anything about relativity. You see, this is why everyone should have watched Ant-Man 2. It's explained that there are time vortexes and those vortexes are what the Avengers use to time travel. Now Scott asking why can't they use his experience to go back in time is due to him having literally time traveled to the future. Logic dictates that if you can enter a vortex that can send you into the future, there might be a vortex that can go to the past. So who do we talk to about this? How about a f***ing quantum physicist? Look, I know Tony's brilliant but this has never been his forte. If anything, Scott himself should know some more appropriate scientists through his associations with Hank. Why not see if Larry Fishburne is still alive? Except physics is precisely where Tony's expertise is concentrated. With Hank Pym, Shuri, and Spider-Man all dead, the Hulk and Iron Man are the only two geniuses they know about with the capability to handle this, and Bill Foster is on the run. Jesus, did no one watch Ant-Man 2? We could go back, we could get them. Sure, getting your friends and loved ones back is a noble idea, but it's also morally murky. Remember, life has been going on for five years now. People have moved on. People are in new marriages. Some dangerous people who used to torment others are out of the picture. This would cause even more chaos and be like Castaway times 3.5 billion. So essentially what you're saying is that all the innocent people who were snapped away through no fault of their own should stay dead simply because the people that survived have moved on? Can't say I agree with that, CinemaSins. Model rendered. Holy Tony solves the eternal question of time travel in less time than it took to actually write the scene. Is that really unbelievable in the context of this universe, though? Tony has solved countless seemingly impossible scientific problems like creating AI, synthesizing new elements, and building insane exoskeletons, the first of which was done in a cave with a box of scraps. Then you throw in the fact that we know time travel or manipulation is possible in this universe, and this really seems like an inevitability. Trying to get you to stop has been one of the few failures of my entire life. Pithy one-liner aside, the f he totally stopped. He's out here raising a family in a goddamn cabin in the woods, washing his own dishes and tucking his kid into bed at night. He's not out there Iron Manning anymore, so this line is a big old sack of Pepper wasn't the one that got him to stop, though. Thanos beating the Avengers is the reason he stopped. Okay, here we go. Time travel test number one. This test is not successful, but it's also not unsuccessful in that they do actually transport Scott over time. So this means that two scientists have made giant breakthroughs in time travel over the same roughly 12-hour period. First of all, no. Bruce did not succeed in transporting Scott over time. What he did was push time through Scott. There's a difference. And the reason Bruce figured out this was possible was because Scott proved the existence of the time vortexes by traveling through them. The same reason Tony made his discovery. A fully functioning time-space GPS. It's weird to me that Tony knew enough of Hank Pym's work to properly make a device that would help people travel through time in the quantum realm, a place where only two people have ever been, with one of those people evaporated by the snap and the other being lovable doofus Scott. I thought the first Ant-Man was about how Hank took his work and hid it from everyone, including Tony's dad. And the evil Darren Cross tried to make his own tech that ended up liquefying a baby lamb. And they ended up blowing up dude's lap. I'm pretty sure they didn't give this tech to Tony. So the result is Tony's a genius, don't think time travel possible. By rule, I think the movie has to do this because the how is and all that explainable, and the movie is three hours, but Jesus. It took Doc Brown 30 years to perfect time travel, and it didn't even require that much explanation because you trusted the amount of time that went into it. The dialogue presented when Scott pleads with Tony to help them and the later scene showing Tony's failed attempts at solving the problem demonstrates that Tony had already been playing around with the idea of time travel. Time travel is a staple of science fiction and something physicists have been theorizing about for years. Of course Tony has considered it before knowing of Hank Pym's work. This is why he knows quantum fluctuation messes with the Planck scale. Scott's visit introduces new possibilities, so it causes Tony to revisit and figure out the problem. This is 100% on Scott here. How did he not notice a motherfucking spaceship about to land a few yards away before he opened the taco? This is you manipulating a scene once again, when Scott unwrapped his taco, the Benatar was not even in the vicinity yet and only landed when it was in his hand. 
Thor! Thor's fat. Get it? It's a joke for almost the whole movie, except when the movie wants you to take it seriously. Then back to joke. Get it? Fat Thor is actually the best character building aspect of this movie. This man has lost his brother, his sister, his father, his mother, half his people, and feels responsible for billions of deaths simply because he tried to savor his victory over Thanos and didn't kill him instantly. He's let himself go because sometimes this is what people do when they've lost everything. It's funny, but it makes sense. Of all the bullshit this movie did not need, it's Hawkeye's career as a vigilante. But even more, I can't believe Hawkeye is the kind of guy who can take on a horde of Yakuza on his own. You might say Hawkeye has fought tons of enemies stronger than this, and I say, with help. This is what I've been telling you forever. Hawkeye is far more badass than you have been giving him credit for. There is a reason this guy is an Avenger, and it's because he can do shit like this. One side there, Lebowski. Hilarious reference, but this is a reference to a movie that starred Jeff Bridges, who was in the original Iron Man, stop with the constant references, especially when they make no goddamn sense. Gah! Jeremy sends a film for doing something he does all the time, ex machina. If you travel to the past, that past becomes your future, and your former present becomes the past, which can't now be changed by your new future. Are we really just going to leave out the alternative timeline explanation here? Because this reason focuses on the effects of time travel on one individual. It basically says all those new timeline people can go f themselves. Except the film answers this question by showing you that nothing really happens to these other timelines when they slip into them. However, the long-term effects of time travel haven't been explored yet, and I suspect they will further answer these questions with Mordo in Doctor Strange 2. We only have enough pin particles for one round trip each. And these stones have been in a lot of different places. They later accidentally themselves into Hank's lab in 1970 and grab some pim juice then. But why wouldn't they just start by going back to a time when Hank was alive and grab a bunch of them then? So that they'd have almost unlimited chances at this. I'm not just throwing out a crazy amateur theory. This makes all the sense. And there are at least two super geniuses on this team. Obviously, the time heist works on a cinematic level, but your idea runs the risk of failing and being stuck in the past. A better idea would be for Fat Thor to return to Wakanda in 2018, where 2018 Thor has Thanos subdued and chopped Thanos' arm and head off with Stormbreaker. Boom. All six stones. I like the Avengers theme a lot. Like, it's one of the most recognizable themes in modern movies, but they lean hard into that in this movie. This would be like Star Wars playing the opening fanfare during all your favorite moments in Return of the Jedi. No, it would be like if Star Wars played the Imperial March through all your favorite moments in Empire and Return of the Jedi. Which they do. Movie gives me another chance to send this stupid gun cocking that Black Widow does during the hero shot. Hordes of aliens are raining down on New York, but sure, the fate of the world might end up resting on that clock. Dude with a literal bow and arrow in the background sends the gun. Oh, thanks for the rooftop assist, Ancient One. You ever think of maybe sending some of the masters you know out to the battle, since this directly threatens Earth? Does the threat only have to be mystical before you get off your ass? Says this while literally showing a scene of her getting off her ass. Hmm, I think I know a guy parodying CinemaSins who said something similar. I'm gonna have to call the director. That's okay. Trust me. Hail Hydra. Look, this is a great scene. It's even a fun throwback to Winter Soldier in the middle of the 2012 Avengers timeline. But this asshole decides, eh, we don't have to call the director about this. Even though he's never been told that Cap is on board with Hydra. I mean, he doesn't even think it might be a trick or something. What reason would they have to think Cap in 2012 is trying to trick them? From their perspective, demonstrating that he has knowledge of Hydra and hasn't yet killed them means he's on their team, period. The Infinity Stones create what you experience as the flow of time. Remove one of the stones, and that flow splits. Oh, is that so? So, in 2023 present day, with the stones destroyed, what did that do with the flow of time? Or do the atoms still count? <laughs> this is incredible. The Sorcerer Supreme literally says what happens when you remove a stone, and seconds later you ask what happens when you remove a stone. <sighs> anyway, yes, the atoms do count. I can't risk this reality on a promise. I'll also require a hunch about what Doctor Strange is going to do in a few years. If I have that, reality risked. Or she knows that Doctor Strange wouldn't give up the Time Stone without a reason? You know, the explanation in the film? <laughs> Thor totally f***s the Dark World's Thor. There's a battle about to take place here. And you screwed him because you want your hammer back? Sure, Steve brings the hammer back, but Thor doesn't know that someone's going to make a return trip until later when Bruce finds out about the branch realities from the Ancient One. Bruce quickly suggests returning everything back to its proper time after being rebuffed by the Sorcerer Supreme, meaning that the plan to return everything was probably already in place. Guys, I've got it. Since we lost the wonderful Stan Lee, let's just cast Mark Maron to stand in for his cameos in future MCU movies. Look at him. It's perfect. Jeremy says all this and treats it as a sin of this movie. How is this a sin, you might ask? Who the fuck knows? 
But the raccoon didn't have to climb a mountain. But how do they know to climb this mountain? Or any mountain at all? There's an entire planet to explore, but they're positive the f***ing soul stone is right here? They know because pretty much everything was explained to them by Nebula, who had it explained to her by Gamora. The only thing no one knew was that a sacrifice was required. This being the second time we've seen a successful acquisition of the soul stone, I'm wondering, what the f*** does Red Skull do after this? Does he wait until someone brings it back? And remember, Steve is supposed to come back here later and replace the stone like this never happened. Where does he put it? The fact that this stone is acquired by a sacrifice rather than stolen makes it a problematic stone to return, no? According to the Russos, Red Skull is set free when someone attains the soul stone. And obviously returning the stone isn't problematic because Steve actually does it. The fact that it isn't shown to you doesn't mean it's a problem or a sin of this film. Can't get her back. Can't be undone. Well, yeah, it can actually. Since you guys obviously don't give a f about other timelines, you can just go back to a time where she's lived and just take her with you. I know, I said this in my parody video mocking CinemaSins, but this is true. After they undo the snap, they can just use the pin particles to return to right before she died getting the Soul Stone and bring her to this timeline while giving that timeline's Clint the Soul Stone so that he can complete his mission. There's no real reason they cannot do this. The Hulk snap brought back all the dead folks to life, but let's think about the practicalities here. What happened to people who were like on a flight when Thanos did his do they appear in midair and do a wily e. coyote shrug before falling to their deaths? Or did Hulk guide them to safety? And how unfair is it that the people who were snapped away off an airplane get to live, but the people who crashed into the airplane just stay dead? And if the people who died were brought back, then check the cemeteries because we have a zombie apocalypse on our hands. This was something I was curious about myself until I stumbled upon Kevin Feige explaining that smart Hulk had the forethought to return people safely relative to their original position. This means if they were in the air, they were returned to the ground or the safest landmass. This is back up by the film showing no falling humans from the sky. As for the people that died due to their craft losing a pilot, yep, they stay dead. With the stones you've collected for me, create a new one, teeming with life that knows not what it has lost, but only what it has been given. So with the stones, he could have literally done anything he wanted, and he chose option Z, cut the population of the universe in half. What a f***ing dick! I was on board with Thanos' thoughtful madness because it made a certain sense for a villain to exercise a cruel intelligence on life in his quest for balance. But now that we know he could create a whole universe, that whole balance thing that he once espoused and I believed in no longer works. He could have created two Earths connected by an accordion tunnel and told astrophysics to go f*** itself while half the population moved to the literal new world. Source material doesn't matter in the CinemaSins universe, but the word on the street is that the comic book Thanos did all this to impress a lady named Death. That's right, the power of boners made Thanos do this, and his actions make way more sense under that context than this does. The thing that you have to understand is that this is a different Thanos. He has learned from the mistakes of his future self, and he realized that people will attempt to change what he does. The previous Thanos thought everyone would be grateful. His new plan is to create a new universe that doesn't know about him killing half of them. That way no one will try to undo his actions. Also, Jeremy says boner. Avengers! Assemble. Yes! Although, this means we're gonna get a stupid jumble of effects-driven bullshit fan service for the next several minutes before there are actual stakes involved, aren't we? What kind of horrific, slack-jawed, bird-brained pig nipple would send this amazing scene? Them's fighting sins. Cap! What do you want me to do with this damn thing? Get those stones as far away as possible! No! We need to get them back where they came from! This might be the dumbest part of the movie, because Cap and Hulk's orders are not mutually exclusive. They should be getting the stones as far away as possible so that the Thanos can't get them. And they can always take the stones back after they beat Thanos anytime they want to solve the branch reality problem. Dude, are you not watching the movie? Thanos just took on Iron Man, Thor, and Captain America wielding Mjolnir and damn near won by himself. Now he has his army with him. This is nowhere near a lock that they will win, so it's best to at least try to take these stones back to the past. If I tell you what happens, it won't happen. This is absolutely telling him what happens. Is it? Because I'm pretty sure Tony has no idea he's about to kill himself. As I see Ant-Man and the Wasp smiling at each other and shrinking down, I'm once again compelled to ask why they can't fly into Thanos' ear canal or nostril, re themselves, and explode Thanos into a hundred million balanced chunks of meat. This was the problem with all the people suggesting that Ant-Man should go up Thanos' butt. Thanos is incredibly strong and durable. What would end up happening is Ant-Man would crush himself inside Thanos' body. That would be like trying to destroy two cinder blocks by inflating a balloon between them. Come on, of all the scenes in the Marvel movies that don't make the power differential clear between two opponents, it's this one. Captain Marvel is world stronger than Thanos, and Thanos has taken a beating so far. 
In what universe is Captain Marvel worlds stronger than fucking Thanos? Did you not just see him sling her like a ragdoll? If she were worlds stronger, she'd have wrestled the gauntlet away, and she had her hands on it twice. It also took both her hands to keep his one hand from closing. Yeah, 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 headbutt. But Thanos had been fighting Thor, Iron Man, Captain America with Mjolnir, and Scarlet Witch, and had taken significant damage in this battle, and is still holding his own. This is just two powerful characters going back and forth. I don't see the issue here. During the strong Iron Man is able to remove the stones from the nanotech gauntlet. Neither there was an ejector button or he pried them off. I don't know what the hell happened. It looks like the stones may have fallen off and landed on the ground. But that could just be pieces of Tony's suit for all I know. But somehow this turns into Tony having possession of the stones, no questions asked. In Infinity War, we were shown that Tony basically has mental control over the nanomachines in his suit, so all he would have to do is use that ability to transfer the stones to his hand. Do they have to turn to dust if you kill a bunch of fools with the Infinity Gauntlet? Like, can you ask them to turn into something a little jazzier? Like confetti? Or Dippin' Dots? Or Play Slime? Or something, I don't know, less dour? Yes, you can. See why asking questions don't count as sins? I guess Tony ordered up to make all the Thanos army disappear in front of Thanos before Thanos disappears, snap. If you're the Avengers, don't you get a little worried that Thanos isn't going away during all this? Obviously, Tony wants Thanos to see his people die the same way he was forced to watch Spider-Man die. And if I'm an Avenger, I clearly understand what is going on here and would moon Thanos to rub it in before he dies. 